Well, it's a rainy day, but we're going to head out to Upper Spectacle Pond anyways. Um, it's a beautiful walk. We're going to see what we might find along the way and uh, give you a little sense of uh, walking in Western Massachusetts. Well, here's a plant that's kind of an interesting one. This is jewelweed. Notice how the flowers hang like a jewel on a pendant. They're really pretty flowers. Also called touch-me-not, but I'm looking around and I don't see any seeds yet. But when the seeds are ripe, the seed pod is spring-loaded and the seed pod will, when you touch it, will shoot out the seed. Touch-me-not. The seed is actually edible which is really kind of cool, uh, but it's a lot of work. It's a tiny, tiny little seed, and you have to scrape off the outer coating before you can get it edible. Maybe we'll find one a little bit later this season that's all set to go, and we'll share that video with you as well. Oh, there's some pobble bush. Look at the berries on this. Isn't that wonderful? We did a uh, video on hobble bush earlier, so check that one out. Uh, bright red, red berries. You can see a little bit of the color change going on here. Okay. And uh, a little bit more of it. Oh, look at it over here. Isn't that beautiful? <clears throat> yep. Hobble bush, really neat plant. Uh, large clusters of flowers, some being fertile, some being infertile, but really, really showy to attract the insects. All right, let's keep heading on towards the pond. So along the trail, there's this beautiful little stream, and by the stream, I'm finding this beautiful plant, often called doll's eye, with the little black forming a pupil, and the white, of course, maybe like a china doll's eye. The actual name of the plant is white baneberry, or Actea pacopodia. Pacopodia meaning um, fat-footed, and supposedly it's because of these uh, red parts uh, pedicels of the flower, which now hold, of course, the seed, but they're thicker than other members of the genus Actea. Actea pacopodia, white baneberry. Now, baneberry means poisonous berry. Bane means poison, and these are definitely a poisonous plant. All parts of the plant are poisonous, but because of the attractiveness of the berries, they offer a particular danger. This is a cardiac poison and it can cause cardiac arrest. So stay well clear of this. Keep your kids clear of it as well. Bane, white baneberry or Actea pacopodia. And it's here along this beautiful little creek on our way in to um, upper Spectacle Pond. Uh, this is actually where we saw earlier this year the cardinal flowers in full bloom. We can still see a few of them left in bloom out here along this little beaver backwater. So check out our, our video about cardinal flower as well. Okay. Let's keep going on our trail. Uh, I hate this. I see lots of trash along this trail. And almost all of the trash that I see is alcoholic trash. Um, I think people are 
having themselves a little drink before coming in to go fishing or in the wintertime snowmobiling or uh, just boating in general um, not wanting to get caught I guess with an open container they just throw these cans out along the trail it's really disappointing I hope that uh, if you're out in the woods that you'll pick these up just like I do Let's just continue along our way anyways and see what else we can find. Here in Massachusetts, you might come across a place like this. Trees that are numbered. And I find them here on both sides of the trail and done a little bit of research and what I find out is that these trees are actually part of an ongoing forest survey. They call it the Continuous Forest um, Survey or, and what they're trying to do is they're trying to just keep track of how the forest is growing and how it might be changing over time and so every five or ten years they'll come out, they'll resurvey these particular trees, they'll determine their growth, that's what the line is for. So the line is at breast height, diameter breast height, DVH, an important piece of information to measure the growth of an area. Here's a, another piece of trash that I just found. Again, alcoholic. And they'll also look to see if the tree died, if the tree is healthy, if other trees are growing up in the area. And so they get a good sense of what's happening at the forest. And in Massachusetts, these are scattered throughout the state. But in other states, you'll find them as well. You'll also find them on federal properties like U.S. Forest Service properties and the such. It's a great little tool for keeping an eye on what's going on in our forests. <clears throat> so I came across this really interesting plant. This is Podophyllum palatum. Common names are mayapple or false mandrake. And podophyllum refers to the leaf. It's uh, foot-shaped, although I don't see him. And palatum. Palatum means shield-like or shield-shaped. That I do see, this big, flat, shield-like shape. Now, um, podophyllum palatum, may apple, um, comes in two varieties. And that is, there's the, the stem, single stem, with a single leaf at the top. Well, I can't really call it a stem. So this is a single leaf variety. This is the infertile type. And then there's the double leaf variety right here. And this is the fertile fruit. And down here at the axle of the two leaves, in May, we get um, a very pretty little flower that pendants or hangs below these two leaves. So it's sometimes hard to find. But if you find the leaf, you can find the flower. It's a white or yellowish green flower or sometimes even a red flower that we find and really pretty. That's where we get the May part of this uh, plant. Now, I said I couldn't really call this a stem, and that's because the stem is actually underground. It's a rhizome, and these two plants that we see here could actually be the same plant connected by an underground rhizome and shooting up different infertile and fertile leaves all throughout this little colony. Um, the plant is obviously a green plant, so it photosynthesizes and gets its nutrients that way, but it also gets its nutrients from a mycorrhizal association, a fungus underground that sheathes the roots of this plant and helps it regain nutrients 
and the plant provides some of the photosynthetic um, products such as sugars to the fungus in a symbiotic relationship or at least a quasi symbiotic relationship. The plant might be getting more out of it than the fungus is. So again, May for the flower and apple for this fruit, the May apple. Now, I should point out that all parts of this plant are poisonous with the exception of the ripe fruit. And in the, in the late summer, then we get this fruit turning yellow. So right now it's kind of greenish, which means it's still toxic. Now, the poison is interesting. There's actually, it does two things. The first thing is, is it's a purgative. So if you eat the leaves or you eat the flower or you eat the fruit or any part of this plant, um, bad things are gonna happen. Uh, diarrhea, uh, vomiting, uh, it's gonna come out both ends of you. So don't eat the plant, okay? Even in, uh, when the fruit is ripe, only in really, really small quantities, and I don't recommend that at all. Don't eat the plant. So it's a purgative. But it also has another characteristic, and that is that it produces a chemical which inhibits cell growth. And because it inhibits cell growth, it has been used to treat types of cancer. And in fact, the World Health Organization has listed the chemical, the medicine that comes from the chemical from this plant to be one of the essential medicines on earth. So it's a really important chemical that um, helps with the treatment of cancer. But again, like most medicines, it's toxic unless uh, prescribed at the proper amounts. So, May apple, Podophyllum palatum. Well, it looks like we have arrived at the lake. And Moon is down here waiting for me so that I can throw her a stick because, well, she just loves to go after sticks in the water. So let's see if I can find a stick over here. Yeah, here's one. Okay. Okay. So. Are you ready, pup? <laughs> she swims like a beaver. That's a good girl. <laughs> you gonna bring me the stick? Okay. Ooh. Okay, let me have the stick. <laughs> what? Can I have the stick? So uh, this little pond, like Luna, has got a lot of beavers on it. It's a very active beaver pond. It's a really nice little paddling spot. If you find yourself in Western Massachusetts, you should come on out here and paddle. It is a gravel road and kind of a rough road to get in on, so you should be careful. Uh, it's uh, got a little dam here. And uh, that makes the river, or the lake, but the uh, beavers here are trying to make the lake a little bit bigger. You can see they have built a little bit of dam right here before the dam. And uh, it's slowly filling in, nice beautiful cattail uh, area, which is really nice. And uh, if you... Uh, find that 
this is stuff difficult to get to. You don't want to drive on a gravel road. Um, there's a pond just downstream from here called Lower Spectacle Pond. And it's right on Cold Spring Road, so it's a fairly easy pond to get to. It also has a boat uh, access point, car top carriers only, uh, so that you can get a kayak or canoe in there. I'm Tom, and this is Two Naturalists.